Hi, in this video, as you can see, we're going to talk about inflation. Uh, this is a learning video, and the next couple of videos after this, example videos, we'll look at um, some types of examples that I think that you're likely to see uh, on an actuarial exam. Okay, so let's start the, the video with an illustration of what inflation is. Let's say the year is 2019 and you have a, uh, a basket of groceries, that picture with the uh, 200 in it is, I'm thinking of as a, a cart of groceries or a basket of groceries that costs $200. And let's say a year later in 2020, the cart of groceries, the basket that has the exact same items in it, costs $206. Well, since 206 divided by 200 is 1.03, then going from 200 to 206 is going to imply that you're, uh, you're using a 3% annual effective interest rate. So I'm going to do denote that by R, and I'm going to call that the inflation rate because that's being applied to this cart of groceries. And let me also mention that it might not be a cart of groceries that you're dealing with. Maybe... Um, Maybe the $200 is representing maybe something like an office visit to a, to a medical doctor. And then that $200 office visit in, 200, in, two, in 2019 cost $206 in 2020. And so that, that rate there would be, like a, would be called a medical inflation rate. So you'll see if you work for a health insurance uh, actuary, you'll talk about medical inflation. And so that's the type of thing that we're talking about. If you're really interested in where these numbers come from, like the 3%, where the 200 to the 206 came from and, and stuff like that, then uh, going back to the context of, of, uh, of, of groceries, uh, the, uh, the, the measure that's often used for inflation is called the Consumer Price Index. So you can Google the com Consumer Price Index or do a Wikipedia search uh, on a consumer price index and it'll get, give you a better indication of where these, uh, you know, how this is, is actually measured, how the inflation rate is actually measured. But uh, for our purposes, we're going to assume that the inflation rate is given and we want to, uh, I want to show you the types of problems you're going to see or the information that you'll need to know uh, on actuarial exams. Okay, so let's assume, I'm going back to thinking of this 200 and 206 as being uh, the, the prices for uh, a basket of groceries or a cart of groceries in 2019 and in 2020. Let's say that at the beginning of 2019 or in 2019 you have, uh, have $10,000 in, in, uh, separately in some investment account. Okay, so now the a return that you're going to get on that $10,000, there's no reason to think that it's tied to the inflation rate. The inflation rate was based on uh, the, you know, how much the, the uh, cart of groceries was going to change in price. There's no reason to think that your $10,000 is going to change at the exact same rate, and it'll hardly ever, it'll never change at that rate. Um, and in fact, let me make a comment that sometimes $10,000, I'm thinking of this as being in an investment account, in this module, we are going to get into situations where we have negative returns on investment. So it's, it's po certainly possible that $10,000 accumulates to a, a value that's less than $10,000 in 2020. And we'll talk about that in the next, uh, in the next few learning videos. Um, and, and in that case, that's not a good situation because you have an inflation rate. You're not keeping up of 3%. You wouldn't even be keeping up with inflation. So to illustrate this in this example, though, the illustration in this example, what I want to assume is that the $10,000 is accumulating at a pace that out, out, that it outpaces the rate of inflation. So let's say the $10,000 accumulates to 11330 and since the ratio of those two numbers is 1.133, then that's going to imply an annual, inf annual effective interest rate of 13.3% from 2019 to 2020. And I'm going to denote that by an I, and I'm going to call that a nominal rate. Now, nominal is a word that we've used already in Module 1, and uh, you just have to understand this is a different context. It doesn't mean the same thing as in Module 1. In the context of inflation, the word nominal rate just means the rate that your assets are performing at. Okay, now let's look a little bit closer at these, at these, uh, uh, at these numbers here, and let's talk about buying power. You know, how many carts of groceries can you buy with the money that you have? Well, in 2019, you have $10,000. A cart of groceries is 200, so you can buy 50 carts of groceries. In 2020, using the numbers in 2020, you'll see you can buy 55 carts of groceries. And since the ratio of 55 to 50 is 1.1, that's going to imply an annual effective interest rate of 10% to go from 50 carts of groceries to 55 carts of groceries. And I'm going to denote that with an I prime, and this is 
is going to be called the real rate of return. All of this is terminology and also notation, I should add, that, uh, that is, is, is standard. It's in the textbooks that's on the reading material for the FM exam. Okay, now for the rest of the videos here, uh, the rest of the slides, the rest of the video, I want to talk about relating, you know, is, what's the relationship between the R, the I, and the I prime. And so to do that, let's start with the 50 and the 55, and notice that the 55 is equal to a 50 times the 1 plus I prime. And now let's look at where the 55 and the 50 came from. Well, the, I have it highlighted in red where the 55 and the 50 came from, so let's just substitute those values in for the 50 and the 55, and I get this equation. Now let's look at where the 11,330 and the 206 come from. So I've highlighted in red where those come from, and you can see from the the, the bottom equation in red that the 11,330 is equal to 10,000, and I'm going to do it symbolically, times, so, so not time, I'm going to do it symbolic, times a 1 plus i. So the 11,330 is 10,000 times 1 plus the nominal rate. Likewise, the 206 is 200 times 1 plus r. So substitute those in. And from this last equation, you can see it really didn't matter that I started with the basket of groceries costing 200 and an initial balance of 10,000 because those are going to cancel off. And when I clear out fractions, I get this equation that 1 plus i, 1 plus the nominal rate, is equal to 1 plus the inflation rate times 1 plus the real rate of return. So that's the equation that relates the i, the r, and the i prime, and that's the one that you're going to uh, be using. That's the, that's the important equation that comes from uh, this particular lesson. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.